268. Class. Calcedon Report, number 62, October 1st, 1970. We have in the last two reports been analysing the significance of an upper class and its decline and the growing victory of the lower class mentality. Our concern now, as we study the lower class mind, is to examine the popularity of two very different peoples, the American cowboy and the Polynesian. In America today, the cowboy is a popular television hero and a national symbol of sorts. The sheep herder, on the other hand, has no like prestige, nor does the farmer. We must remember, too, that the cowboy's prestige does not include the cattlemen, except to a minor degree. The cattleman, the ranch owner, is a responsible, independent man. The farmer, too, is a man who must exercise foresight, patience and diligence to survive and prosper. The despised sheep herder is actually only a hired hand, like the cowboy, but with a difference. The sheep herder must live with his sheep in a sheep wagon, doctor and care for them, living alone continuously. He must thus be a responsible, patient and future-oriented man. Significantly, few young Americans ever become sheep herders today. The pay is good, and after ten or more years of such work, a herder who has saved his money can go into some enterprise of his own. Few Americans are so future-oriented or patient. Most sheep herders must be imported. Basques, Greeks and some Mexicans. After a period of time, these herders retire to their homeland, as well-to-do citizens, or they go into ranching or business in America. Many of the most important citizens of the western intermountain area of the United States are ex-sheep herders or their sons. On the other hand, it is rarely ever the case that a cowboy saves up his money to go into his own enterprise. Many cowhands have only the clothes on their backs. They are drifters, gamblers and present-oriented spendthrifts. But it is the cowboy's very lack of foresight and law, his heedlessness of responsibility, which makes him a folk hero today. The modern mind is existentialist. It is concerned with the moment, not the future. It despises thrift, patience and enterprise. John Cage has recommended to other musicians and composers that the proper approach to writing must be a, quote, purposeful purposelessness. The arts work towards a breakdown of rational control, purpose and meaning. Rob Grier has called for the end of the, quote, universe of signification, end quote, that is, the world of meaning in the arts, so that we have, according to Eric Kahler, the jeopardy of language itself and the triumph of incoherence. We have, as he states, the outspoken attempt to produce incoherence, what these movements ultimately arrive at, what, in the end, they want to accomplish is the total destruction of coherence and with it the deliberate, and that means the conscious destruction of consciousness. Eric Kala, The Disintegration of Form in the Arts, New York, New York, Bezeler, 1968, pages 95 and 96. Returning to the cowboy, he is a natural rather than a philosophical existentialist, and, as a result, he is a television hero. On television, the cowboy is, naturally, not a married man. Marriage means responsibility. It means the necessity of thinking about someone other than yourself. Moreover, the television and movie cowboy rarely solves problems. His answer is the gun. Thus, his, quote, solution, end quote, is, in effect, war and revolution, not a constructive development. The cowboy hero wipes out problems. He does not solve them. Having left death and destruction in his wake, Dead men, rooms turned into a shambles, and grieving people, he gets on his horse and rides on. There is no thought of reconstruction. The future-oriented upper-class man knows that every act today has implications for tomorrow. His actions are aspects of a planned life, and he is highly conscious of what the future may bring. As a result, his actions are responsible and future-oriented. He, quote, counts the cost, end quote, as a religious duty, because Jesus Christ requires it of his followers. Luke chapter 14, verses 27 to 33. 
To count the cost means to recognize that we live in God's universe of law and that ideas and actions alike have consequences. Any man who fails to count the cost is a fool and a lower class mind, whatever his wealth or social position. A generation which is lower class in outlook will seek lower class heroes and, as a result, the cowboy is its folk hero. Another kind of person widely idealised in our time is a Polynesian. From Melville's day to the present, the Polynesian has been to many people a citizen of paradise, a person living in a beautiful sexual heaven where there is neither work, responsibility nor consequence, only erotic and dreamlike native girls to titillate their idiot imagination. Dr Robert C. Suggs, anthropologist, has recorded some data about Polynesian orgies, he regards them as a wonderful people. Much of the really heavy drinking done by the adults was done in the spirit of contest to see who could manage to drink under the table the husbands of the most accessible females and still remain conscious enough to possess the victor's prize. Many such contests soon became sexual orgies, with discretion and custom thrown completely to the winds. Wives took lovers right beside their dead drunk husbands, Young boys lured women of their mother's generation into the bush, and even incest prohibitions were transgressed. Robert C. Suggs, The Hidden Worlds of Polynesia, New York, New York, Mentor, 1962-1965, page 110. This is the appeal of Polynesia to the lower class mind. And not only hippies, but young executives are busy trying to turn the Western world into a new Polynesia. The lower class mind is not future oriented because it does not recognize that it lives in a world of law. To the extent that any culture departs from biblical faith, to that extent it becomes lower class because it denies God's sovereign counsel on law and it is therefore not future oriented. Only to the extent that man recognizes that the world is under God's law does he at every point then plan and act in terms of that law. Lower class religion, economics, politics and all things else deny that any absolute law exists which can bind man. Man must move in terms of the moment and human need, according to these humanists. Instead of a future conditioned by God's law word, by supply and demand, by economic realities and basic laws, the future is seen as entirely made by man. Man makes his own law, his own future, and his own consequences, according to humanists, in radical contempt of any law alien to man. But when man strips the world of meaning, he also strips himself of meaning. This is very sharply apparent in the writing of archaeologist Geoffrey Bibby, looking for Dillman, New York, New York, Alfred Ed Knopf, 1969. Bibby gives an interesting account of great ancient civilization beginning about 3000 BC and dying about 1000 BC, whose name was even unknown to us for 2,400 years. In conclusion, after describing his work, Bibby wrote, And when, one day, it will all have been said and done, when the last basket full of earth has been carried up from the diggings and the last word of the last report written, what will it all have mattered? A Dillman has emerged once more from the mists of oblivion that we can cross the threshold which you Perry, King of Dillman, trod, look up at the fortress walls that guarded the emporium of all the Indies. What does it matter? Does it matter who the people were who, in the dawn of our time, opened up the trade routes from Melua to Macan, from Macan to Dillman, from Dillman to Sumer? For two and a half millennia, even the fact that they had been was forgotten, and the world went on happily enough, unaware that it was unaware. Among all the lost volumes of human history, what is one lost chapter more or less? They are dead and gone, these merchant adventurers of another age, and neither the archaeologist's trial nor the pen of the chronicler can bring back the argosies that once sailed the blue waters of the Arabian Gulf. It can matter as little to them as it does to us, that now, once more, we know little of their doings, a few of their names. Page 383 how long can research and science endure when the work men do has no meaning?
because the universe is for them meaningless. The sickness of the world of science and learning is this sickness of meaninglessness. Men whose lives are meaningless are incapable of making sound decisions. In fact, they postpone decision-making. Intelligent men make decisions because their future-oriented thinking calls for responsible actions. A crisis confronts them with live options, and they decide in terms of a planned evaluation of alternatives. The lower-class reaction to a crisis is to postpone decision in the hopes that the crisis will go away. He wants, quote, time, end quote, to solve what he is morally required to solve. The September 1970 International Monetary Fund meeting's answer to the world's economic and monetary crisis was to, quote, mark time, end quote. The lower-class man floats with the current because he will not look beyond the moment. According to Solomon in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 22, Berkeley Version, Prudence is a fountain of life to its possessor, but folly is the chastisement of fools. The fool is a man who does not consider consequences. His mentality is lower class. Class is thus not a social issue, nor is it related to a social register. All too many whose names are in a social register are lower class descendants of upper class ancestors who now coast on an inherited name and wealth. Class is ultimately a religious matter. It is the recognition that the world is God's world and therefore under God's law. At every point we must therefore count the cost. We must be future-oriented, otherwise we are trash. Neither fit for the land, nor yet fit for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Luke chapter 14, verse 35. History is God's handiwork. If man and nations do not reckon with the future under God, religiously, politically, economically, ecologically, and in every other way, they will wind up in the manure pile of history. Is that your destiny? Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 to 16.